I'm Rob, and welcome to Smart Boat Innovations. I started this channel because I feel I can help a lot of people set up their boat to be a smart boat. I've always been helping friends and other sailors to integrate technology onto their boats, and I've been doing this for a long time. So I thought, ah, oh, maybe a, a channel can reach out to more people. Uh, before I start, a bit of history. I've sailed twice around the world, distance-wise. I've owned this boat for 27 years. For over 20 years, I've been sailing around the world. It's my home. On the other side, I have a degree in computer science. I've worked for large banks and institutions. And, but I've always tried to merge the two. I've always been keen to bring technology to boating. Uh, it all started back in 1997 in Australia, and I was a skipper of a Sydney Hobart boat. We weren't on a competitive boat, and I, I wanted to get some sort of technology edge, maybe it would help us. Uh, I wanted to get some electronic charting instrumentation on board, because everyone back then was just using paper charts. Uh, we had GPS, likely, but you had to plot your position, and you couldn't really tell. You have to be up on deck to see the instruments. So anyway, I, I, there were a few commercial products out there which were really expensive and they didn't do that much. So I ended up uh, like doing my own. I scanned some paper charts. I used some mapping software, not marine software. So then I could have uh, electronic charting it connected to the GPS. So we could see exactly on the chart where we were. It just, it, it just helped. It helped a little bit. Uh, I also got the instruments onto the laptop from outside, up on deck, connected. Um, the crew always laughing. It was a bit of a pain because I'd be down below, off watch, and I'd yell out on deck, say, hey, you're 20 degrees off course. And back then, this was all new. They were looking, how does this guy know this? But yeah, okay, I had the instruments all on a, on a display down below. In 1999, when I sailed into Malaysia, I came across a product called CMAP. This product had all the charts digitalized, all the charts of the world, and it has had a basic uh, charting software where you could plug in your GPS, uh, you could run it on your laptop or any low-powered laptop. And maybe this was available before 1999, but I was spent two years sailing around the Pacific, so I wasn't really in touch with technology. Uh, but this revolutionized navigation for me uh, and most sailors. It just made it so much easier to, to navigate without having to have a paper chart and plotting GPS or, or even a sextant if you into a sextant. Uh, it, then they had other products came by, Maxi, and we have a great open product uh, which is called OpenCPN, which runs on a variety of devices, has a, a great bunch of developers supporting it and it's it's evolving all the time and it's, it's, it's brilliant. My philosophy for smart boating is to use free open systems, especially if they have a large community of users. Sure, if money is not a limitation, you can go down a vendor specific route. But for me, you're locked into their system and sometimes they're not always with the advances of technology or innovation. Um, the marine industry is quite small. I've always looked for solutions outside the industry. Uh, inside the industry, as soon as you put the word marine, the price is a double, triple, quadruple, and you don't get any better functionality normally. For smart homes on land, there's a leading open software product called Home Assistant. It has a huge community of users, and there's so much information available to use it and configure it. People have set up some amazing smart homes on land using Home Assistant. It's also a growing product with many improvements and releases. And since it's an open system, many people can make add-ons or integrations available for Home Assistant. Since my boat is my home, I thought I would try out Home Assistant for my boat. A boat is really similar to a home. Uh, they both have sensors. Okay, a boat has a few specific extra sensors like your navigation equipment and maybe your GPS. Uh, but people setting up home assistant on, on land, I've seen them set up, they have complicated irrigation systems, they have 
solar systems and lithium batteries there. They're monitoring. Uh, so it is, actually is quite quite similar. Uh, I, I like to think that we can use Home Assistant as a framework for smart boating. Uh, it has a graphical interface, which is great. I mean, my philosophy is that to create a smart boat, it shouldn't be just limited to the geeks that can do right computer programs. It should be just like anybody can go, use menus, add a, add a sensor, put an alert in, away we go. Okay, Home Assistant does have extra capabilities to do more, more complex tasks, but even then you don't really have to write computer programs. You, there's some definition language you can use called YAML, and that's about it. And there's so much help on the internet if you get wrong. Uh, Home Assistant runs on a Raspberry Pi, but also runs on many other computers. Just a Pi is a good choice on a boat because it uses very little power. It is cheap. Uh, you can run it 24 hours a day. Okay, lately there's been some supply issues, but they, 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 so it's been hard to get your hand on a Raspberry Pi, but it's changing very quickly. I've been using Home Assistant for my boat, not for long now, just a few months. And I'm just amazed at the things I've been able to do. Uh, I've set up virtual switches. Uh, I can switch on the anchor light, my bilge pump, the deck lights, the water maker. I can switch it on with my phone when I'm on land. I can switch it on from the boat, which is not really great. I can just turn a switch on as well here. But probably the biggest thing is you can run this concept of automations. For example, I have a really simple automation that when the sun sets, turns on my anchor light. When the sun rises, it switches off. Uh, other things like running my water maker. Water makers is good if you run them every day, but I, sometimes I forget. Yeah, I can run them two every three. So I put a simple automation in that they, every day it runs at a certain time for 15 minutes, and away it goes. Uh, also, for example, when you're returning home and it's really dark, it would be so nice to just turn on your deck lights instead of having to get inside the boat or get onto the deck. Using your phone, you could just turn on your deck lights just before you arrive back on your boat, and you can see very well. Uh, you can also integrate your boat instrumentation into Home Assistant. So all the instruments you have out there, for example, uh, your, your wind instruments, your speed, your GPS, you can, you can integrate that into Home Assistant. And likewise, you set up alerts, which is brilliant. Uh, you can set up an alert that tells you, oh, if the wind is blowing so much, uh, send me a message. You can, with Home Assistant, you can send messages to your pho phone. You can use WhatsApp to alert you. You can make it uh, make a noise on a, on, a, on a buzzer that you have in integrated to Home Assistant. Um, so there's many, many things you can do with this data, not just have a, a display that's just on a, on a tablet inside your boat. You actually use it. And I find it very useful. I, I sail a lot single-handed. And I'm so good to know that I can, I can set parameters to say, oh, I'm sailing. If the wind wind is more than, say, 15 knots, send me a message or wake me up or make a little ding, ding, ding on the siren. Um, or if the boat's off course. Also, you can you can check what angle the wind is coming at. I mean, when I have crew or if I'm sailing my own, I always give the crew instructions. Okay, if the wind has changed 20 degrees, we need to do this. If it's changed so much, please wake me up, da, da, da which is really good, but with Home Assistant, I can, it's really quick, I can go in and say, okay, if the wind is, we're running downwind, and the wind is between 120 and 160 degrees, if it's outside those parameters, make a little noise on a buzzer, um, then we know that the wind has shifted. Also, you can actually set up uh, an anchor alarm. It's just the, using the basic properties of uh, in uh, Home Assistant. I've tried using a, a anchor alarm on a mobile phone, and oh, they're just a pain. They, they work or they don't work, or you've got to leave something here when you go ashore. With Home Assistant, you can set up quite easily, and you can get it to send you a message to say if your boat is drifting away. Um, same with, I mean, for example, a depth instrument. You could put on your anchor to say, okay, we're anchored in five meters of water. If somehow the water is between outside some sort of parameters, Please send me a message, and I could be sitting in a in a in a bar or a restaurant on land, and I get a message saying, "Well, it's the, the water depth has changed on my boat. Something's happened. 
So you're a bit more aware. It's 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 great extra information to have what's happening to your to your boat when you're off anchored. And since Home Assistant has such a huge following on land, it's going to be a, it's a product or platform that's evolving. It's going to change, and there's new additions. Um, okay, even even now you can have voice control of Home Assistant. I'm not quite sure what would you use it on a boat for, but I thought maybe the other day um, when you're dropping anchor. Okay, if you were dropping anchor, you want to set an anchor alarm. It's best to set the alarm, the GPS location, exactly where the anchor goes. But it's hard to do that when you're sort of steering the boat or you're dropping the anchor. You can pull out your phone or put something. So you could possibly have a voice command say, "Hey, we're dropping anchor. Mark location now," and it would do it for you. Uh, so it's quite quite interesting the amount, amount of things you could do. Other possible sensors you can put around your boat. I have quite a few that can detect if there's a water leak. I have one underneath my water maker, one in my main bilge. Uh, it's all connected to the home assistant. So if there's any water anywhere in your boat, you get an alert. You get an alert on your phone, WhatsApp, however you want. It's really, really, and it's really easy to set up. Uh, also have a fire alarm alert, which is connected to Home Assistant. Again, the same same thing as it triggers, and then you get an alert. Another possible alert, I haven't done this yet, but I only thought of it the other day, is uh, like a man overboard alert. Uh, okay, most people have a, like a personal e which then sends a message up to a satellite, to the search authorities if you're in the water. Um, there are other systems, commercial systems, which uh, have a base station back on the boat. So if you fall in the water, it sends a sends sets off an alarm on the on on the boat, and the people can find you, which is great. Which is the type of functionality I was thinking setting up in a home assistant. The commercial ones they cost lots of money. Um, I, don't, I don't know how many. I don't know anyone actually who has one. Um, I thought of it, but then the cost is always prohibitive. But I was thinking the other day, oh maybe with home home assistant you can set up a you can take a water sensor with you. Or if you have your home, or you have your mobile phone with you, it's always pinging. And if you're outside Wi-Fi range, it'd say this person is somehow not close to the boat anymore. Uh, it's not probably not foolproof, but uh, it's it's just a a view of things you could possibly do in the future as well. Now I'm going to give you a, a quick demo of Home Assistant, how I've set it up, and example of some of the screens and the the alerts or automations I've set up. Just a quick little. Uh, run through of the functionality of Home Assistant. I'm running Home Assistant here on my laptop. On a laptop, we just run it by a normal browser. On your phone or your uh, tablet, there's a companion app you can download for Home Assistant. So the interface is much, much nicer looking, but the functionality is still the same. So let's start up on the, on the left-hand side here. I've created uh, what Home Assistant called dashboards. Basically, they're logical groupings of, of sensors or entities or anything you want to put together onto one, one, one screen. You can put them all into one dashboard, but I, I wanted to break them up to have a smaller dashboard. So this first one is just the instruments. So here I have the wind speed, the vessel speed, the wind direction, water depth, the magnetic heading, and the water temperature. These are the basic instruments I have in the cockpit. Now, what you see here is, is the vanilla uh, flavored, the very easy to install gauges. Um, they have the basic information. You can put colors on there to show the severity. Um, you can move them around. And it's very, it's just a simple GUI to set up. But if you like to have complicated gauges, there are they're beautiful ones you can set up. For example, you can set up gauges like this as well. But here you have to install some additional uh, add-ons into Home Assistant, and you might have to actually get your hands dirty and uh, change some of the configuration and details in YAML. It's not really coding, but you it, you have to sort of enter en en bits, and it's not just basically done for a, from a graphical UI. But I just wanted to show you the possibilities of the gauges you can set up. I haven't set these up yet because... For me, there's two schools of thought with gauges. I mean, your existing gauges have so much information, like an oil pressure gauge has one, two, three, four, five bar, and then the little graduate. But really, when I what I really want to know is is the is the oil pressure normal or is it abnormal? And you can do that very well with just a green or a red or an orange color. 
Um, so I'm not, I'm in two camps about changing mine to look beautiful and complicated or just having the basics. So you also have, for these gauges, you also have history information. For example, if I go to wind speed and uh, wait for it to load, I can show the history of the wind for the last, and you can go back, depends on how much data you want to store on your Raspberry. Um, you can show the, the wind, how it's changed. It's, uh, of course, here's, it's got the gusts. Okay, at 7 o'clock last night, it was gusting up to 25, and today the wind has been basically uh, up until about the 15 knots. But it's nice. It's, it's interesting. And you can get this for all the information that you get from your boat sensors. You can have a history to see how fast your boat was going, how it slowed up, and there are many, many things. Now let's go over to the next dashboard, which is the GPS chest dashboard. Here I have just selected some basic information from my GPS. You can gather more information, like if you've got cross-track area, whatever, whatever basically your GPS uh, sends out as an NMEA, any attribute, you can, you can collect that in Home Assistant. But here I've just got the basics, the speed and where we are. Uh, Home Assistant also has a map, so I can put in uh, a position on the map to show where the boat is. Now let's go over to the next dashboard, which is the engine dashboard. Now here I've set up some extra sensors on my motor. Normally your motor has oil pressure, water temperature, voltage maybe. Uh, I've actually added some extras, which, I, which I'll show you in another video how I did. Um, so with this, I think I have really good monitoring of my what the state of my engine is, and hopefully I'll be able to recognize if, if there are any problems. So for all of these gauges, um, okay, the engine's not running, that's why the temperatures are just around 20, and there's zero bar for the oil pressure. But for all these gauges, again, you can set alerts. You can set alerts that the alternator temperature is too high, or the coolant is too high, or how, however you like. Now, may, maybe the, the, the temperature you have on here is not exactly what the temperature is, but that's not really the most important. You want to know what the normal temperature is for your engine when it's running, for all the different parts of the engine. And then when, when the temperature goes outside those bounds, you want to be told. So this will tell me a little buzzer. It will tell me a buzzer. It will make a noise. Uh, and I'll know. And hopefully I'll, like, I have things like the raw water exhaust. Normally it it's, should be cool because it's coming in, the salt water is coming in. So, but if your raw water somehow stops, it takes a while for you to actually know that with the normal instruments you have on a boat. Here I'll know very quickly that the raw water, the temperature is going to increase because it's just the exhaust gases coming in. So the temperature will be outside the normal and I'll, I'll, I'll see that the raw water has stopped. Okay, maybe there's someone out on deck and hear the exhaust and the water coming exhaust, but it's just a, a nice extra you can have to monitor your engine. The next uh, dashboard we'll go to, on the left here are the, for the virtual switches which I've set up. I've only, I've only set up a handful of switches which I, I find important, but you can add as many as you want. Uh, there's so many things you can buy which have smart switches. You can put the people in the houses have lots. I didn't find the use case to put that many virtual switches on my boat, but maybe you will. Um, so here I've set up the anchor light. Uh, some of these I've set up virtual switches so I can actually create or control them, sorry, through automations. So the anchor, anchor light, Again, I can control it by an automation. When the sun sets, it will come on, and when it rises, it will switch off. Or if I'm on land, I can switch it on and off as well if I if they didn't have the automation. Uh, for example, the bilge pump. If the bilge pump, mainly this switches, if I'm not on board and somehow the boat was sinking and the automatic float switch wasn't working, I could actually start the bilge pump from, from away from the boat. Uh, the spreader lights or the deck lights, again, when you're coming back to your boat at night, it'd be so nice to somehow just switch them on before you uh, before you arrive on your boat. Uh, then I have a horn as well, which well, there might be some reason I want to want to uh, start that. Then I have the water maker and the indoor siren. But these two are basically I have these virtual switches, so I can use them in automations inside Home Assistant. For example, the water maker, so it turns on every day to do its routine maintenance. The indoor siren, so if I want to link it to an, uh, an alert, for example, the uh, oil pressure or water pressure on my engine, it will call the, the indoor siren. 
Now, this indoor siren it has lots of melodies you can you can program and you can call it and say I want this type of melody this type of melody and you can get really sophisticated um, so but if you just wanted to turn it on with your phone or even from the dashboard here uh, you just click on it and there we go or I have the horn or the mast I don't know if you can hear this but let's go That's that's all the ones I could probably demonstrate demonstrate to you. And the next dashboard, uh, the dashboard for sensors. I haven't got many, and I'm, I plan to put more. Uh, it's very easy to buy uh, and cheap to buy little water sensors, and it's I mean it was one of the fears of most boat owners that your boat is sinking. And even if you're on board and you're sailing along, it's along it's really good to know that you have water coming in before it's above the floorboards. So a couple of these placed around your boat in different locations where you, you think water might come in. I think it's, it's a very useful safety feature to have on your boat. Uh, again, the siren will, 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 uh, will sound inside and also it can send you alerts if you're not on the boat. Again, with WhatsApp or just you can get a, a alert for your, on your companion app that you have for Home Assistant. will come up with a message saying water leak and, and the name of the sensor. And these sensors are really easy to add. Um, I have a smoke smoke detector, which probably everyone should have. Now on the left hand side, we have a entry called map. It's not really a dashboard that we've configured. It's a, it's a menu item that's provided by Home Assistant. Now here I've, I've got it to display the location of the boat um, based on the GPS that we have on board. And I've, I've defined a zone around that boat, um, which is basically an anchor alarm zone. Okay, so now I've been able to set up alerts to, to say that when the boat leaves that zone, sound the internal buzzer or send me an alert on my phone. It's very easy to set up and it's quite useful and it seems to work quite well. So the final thing I'd like to show you is how to set up a, an alert or notification as it's called in Home Assistant. So we scroll down here to Settings. Um, then we have automations and scenes. I have a lot of automations set up, but we're just going to create a new one. We go create new automation. Now automation has like three parts to it. it has the trigger, what makes it happen. It has a condition is like, well, do this, but make sure this is not happening. And the third is the action. So let's start with the the trigger. The trigger is going to be for this, we're going to do uh, turn the anchor light on. So when the sun sets, so we need the sun set, select the sun set, the condition, it's probably better to have a condition of say when we're not sailing, when we're moving. So if the vessel speed, so that's a numerical state, um, and we have to find the speed over ground. Speed over ground sensor. Say the numerical state of speed over ground is below one. So with this, this you get triggered when the sun sets, but it, it has to obey this condition. So it has to be below one. So for the action, we we want to turn the anchor light on. You add an action. Uh, call a service. The service will be a switch. Which we want to switch to turn on, and then we have to choose what the target, which is the target for the switch. So we have an entity. We find the anchor light here, anchor light switch. We have the other ones over here, the horn, the sirens, etc., etc. So here we want to turn on the anchor light. Uh, we can also add as many actions as you want. So here I haven't got it, but maybe we're going to send ourselves a message just to make. Make it uh, obvious that we turn on the anchor light. That we send the let's send the message to ourselves, or let's send a WhatsApp to say we've turned on the anchor light. So we call the service. The service is a notify service. So we have to go down and find N for notify. Uh, send notification with WhatsApp. Uh, with this, this uh, notification already has programmed my phone in there, so we don't have to choose the phone number. 
you put a message on here anchor light turned on and away we go we do a save give the automation a name auto anchor light on and away we go so when the sun sets anchor light will turn on it just just shows how easy once you actually have some switches set up and sensors how easy to to use home assistant to uh, turn things on off on and off or use them in automations I hope you could see the possibilities of using Home Assistant to create your own smart boat. In future videos, I'll dive deeper to show you how to set up Home Assistant, add sensors, alerts, and how to set up the technical parts of integrating your boat instruments and GPS into Home Assistant. Please let me know in the comments below what ideas you have and what videos you'd like to see. And yeah, please subscribe. Hasta luego.